Hello, welcome to Geeking Out with Shad. Well, we are in the dead of winter and it has been cold. Uh, yesterday morning when I got up, it was minus 11 Fahrenheit. Um, for those of you in Celsius land, that is minus 24 degrees Celsius. So really cold. Um, it is it is gnarly. So we just are kind of approaching the tail end of this polar vortex or what does the media call it bomb cyclone wow they really want to <laughs> make that sound like a big deal bomb cyclone it kind of cracks me up anyway um i want to talk about the bolt i promised that this is what i would be doing and this is about as extreme as it gets so um how is the bolt euv handling these extreme cold temperatures or Better yet, how is the Bolt EUV handling the bomb cyclone? <laughs> okay, so everyone's curious to know how the Bolt EUV is doing in these extreme cold temperatures, but I gotta have my coffee first. I know, just wait a moment. I'm almost there. All right, so <laughs> here's a photo of the dash and the stats that I'm getting, just so you can see them. Um, so I'm getting 1.6 miles per kilowatt hour. That's an important number to use to measure how much range I'm gonna get. It's 65 kilowatt hour battery, so we're looking at a, just over 100 miles, 102 or something like that it comes out to. Over on the lower right, you can see that it says minus eight degrees Fahrenheit. So the range is significantly impacted when it gets this cold. A um, couple of things to keep in mind is I live in the city and I'm doing a lot of short trips. So I start the car, it warms up, I drive two miles, four miles, whatever, park the car, cools off again, I start it, drive it. Like, like I'm doing a lot of short trips. If I go to work, that's six miles. Um, I don't go to work that much uh, because we do mostly work from home. But um, if I do go into the office, it's about a six mile drive, but I drive there, park the car and it sits all day, cools off. And then I start it again, it has to warm up. So all these little warm ups that has to do um, really impact the range. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about uh, the differences um, when I'm driving it on the highway. So recently I went to an indoor skate park in a shopping mall. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Uh, we rode our BMX bikes as with my friends and stuff. Um, if you're curious about that, I do have another channel. It's called Shad Life. Um, I have that video over there. You want to see us riding our BMX bikes in a small skate park inside of a old store in a shopping mall. Kind of cool. Um, but back to the Bolt EUV, uh, that drive was about 26 miles. And I did notice that driving on the highway because I was doing a longer trip, I got better efficiency. I got 1.8 miles per kilowatt hour. Well, that makes sense because I'm not doing all these short trips and having the car have to warm up from cold. The car does that initial warm up, but then all it has to do is maintain its temperatures. And then I'm driving on the highway, so I'm going faster at a much, much more distance. So I'm kicking off those miles uh, more rapidly. So it makes sense. So if you're going to do a longer trip, you will get a little bit more range. Um, we're looking at probably 120, 125 miles um, in the cold. And we're talking extreme cold here. Um, and it, it, when it gets a little bit warmer, I'd say up in the teens, maybe even 20s, you might get you know close to 140, 150, something like that. So um, keep that in mind. Um, and also keep in mind the Bolt EUV doesn't have a heat pump. And I'm going to talk about that next. So a heat pump uses one third the energy that an EV needs without a heat pump. So that's a pretty significant amount of savings of the battery. So you're definitely going to get more range in colder temperatures with an EV that has a heat pump. Um, so uh, if you live 
in a colder climate and you're going to need to drive longer distances, you definitely want to get a car that has a heat pump in it. Um, they do cost significantly more. You know, one of the nice things about the Bolts and the Bolt EUV is the price range is anywhere from $26,000 to what I paid for the Top Dog Premier Launch Edition of $37,000, right? That is a significantly cheaper than say a tesla or a polestar 2 or a mustang mach e especially if those cars have heat pumps in them right um which you can get in those cars um so keep that in mind and no you can't get like the nissan leaf with a heat pump either um so i don't know why they don't offer them in those vehicles but they don't so a heat pump is definitely something you'll want to consider if you live in this cold of a climate and need to drive longer distances. For me, it doesn't matter because I can plug in in my garage. I'm doing a lot of shorter trips, things like that. I also have a Toyota Tacoma, you know, ice vehicle, internal combustion engine, right? As backup if I absolutely need it. Um, and I'm gonna talk about that in a bit because EVs are not the only thing that gets significantly impacted by the cold. So let's talk about ICE vehicles, right? ICE stands for internal combustion engine in case you don't know that. So sometimes if you're out there reading, you might see EV to specify electric vehicle, ICE to specify a gas powered vehicle, right? Um, so my Tacoma, um, normally it gets, you know, driving around in the city, you know, stop and go during normal temperatures, warm temperatures it'll get 18 19 miles per gallon on the highway it can get 22 23 miles per gallon um, so on and so forth um, here is what it's getting right now uh, as of uh, yesterday when it was minus 11 fahrenheit which again is minus 24 celsius um, i had to drive it because we had the snowy conditions um, and yeah 12.9 miles per gallon that is terrible and that does include a good amount of highway driving so um it is significantly impacted because of the cold temperatures and i think people want to criticize evs but ice vehicles also do i think what the main difference is is that you can just pull up to a gas station and fill up your you know, ice vehicle versus an EV where you need to charge it, plug it into charge and it takes longer and so on and so forth. That is the more significant difference. But as far as how cars handle these extreme cold temperatures, they just do not handle them that well. And another thing people do a lot with ice vehicles because they take longer to warm up. Like I get in the bolt, start it and everything works and it drives it steers fine everything immediately and the cabin warms up really quickly it's amazing how well it handles the cold um when i start my tacoma it like you know it's like that gnarly sound and then it sits there and makes all these nasty sounds as it's like warming up i try to turn the wheel and the power steering doesn't quite work yet and so on and so forth um so it is it is definitely uh cold and it takes a while for it to warm up and a lot of people with ice vehicles will let them sit there and idle for a long time and things like that just to get them warmed up and stuff so they become much less efficient all of a sudden when you're having to idle it and warm it up and get it so the things start to function and work and the windows clear off um with the bolt that stuff happens really fast. It's pretty impressive how I, much an EV is more convenient, comfortable and stuff in these extreme colds, uh, despite how much more battery uh, is used. Um, so um, yeah, it, all vehicles get impacted when you get to these extreme cold temperatures. Okay, so what's the conclusion here? Well, the conclusion is that it really depends on your situation on whether you would buy something like the Bolt EUV. So um, I live in a city, 
Um, I have a home that has an EV charger in the garage, um, so I can charge my car whenever I need to. Um, usually it's once every three to four days. Um, and when it's this cold in the summertime or warmer temps, I definitely could go more than a week easily. But um, yeah, if you own a home and you have an EV charger, you could, and you do shorter segments or shorter trips, you know, I would say if your daily driving is 50 miles or less or 60 miles or less somewhere in there um, a bolt will do just fine and then you can just plug in overnight and you got a fresh battery the next day um, and you live in these extreme cold temperatures if you live in a warmer climate it's a non-issue I mean just 100% nothing to worry about but uh, in these colder climates um, I would only recommend a bolt EUV if you have a home charger and you have you know shorter uh, daily driving habits right um for anybody else what i would recommend is a car with you know both a bigger battery and a heat pump if you live in these colder climates and you have to drive longer distances um that will suffice for you um as far as like road tripping yeah, I mean, that is kind of the one big thing people talk about, but not everybody road trips with their vehicles. So, um, you know, that's really up to the person on how they want to road trip. Um, if you have an EV and then, uh, of course, as it gets colder, you're going to have to stop more often. Um, you will definitely want to take that extra time to find those fast chargers and charge your car and things like that. Um, so it's definitely a bit different, uh, but for living in a city, owning a home, having a charger available, the Bolt EUV is excellent. I absolutely love it. Um, as far as other uses, yeah, I would spend more money, get a car with a bigger battery, get a car with a heat pump, things like that, and then you'd be fine. Um, so that is really kind of my you know assessment um yeah evs have a ways to go yet before i feel like they could have mass adoption especially for people that live in rural communities things like that so um you know i'm thinking five to ten years a lot of these things will be solved uh heat pumps will be more standard prices will come down and the big breakthrough that's coming hopefully it sounds pretty uh promising is solid state batteries the solid state batteries will be a game changer um, a lot more energy density so they can have much more range in a vehicle and they charge much much quicker and so then it'll be much closer to the experience of going to a, a gas station and refueling um, so yeah it's pretty awesome i love the the progression that we're seeing with EVs. Um, we are really early on in the development of EVs. Um, it's only recent that a bunch of other companies, even GM and stuff like that, have been jumping into EVs. Um, Tesla and Nissan have been at it the longest. I'm surprised Nissan hasn't gotten further along with EVs, being that they've been at it for such a long time. I don't know what's going on with that company. But anyway, um, yeah, I really appreciate your support for my channel. Please like and subscribe. Peace.